Hey guys, Rob here. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at solving a cubic equation. So let's get into it. So the equation I'm going to solve here is this one. It's x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 equals 0. And you can see it's a cubic equation because it contains an x to the power of 3. So the order of this equation is 3. So whatever the highest power of x is in your equation, that's the number of solutions you're looking for. So because this is a cubic equation where the highest power of x is 3, it means I'm looking for three solutions here. Now, at least one of those solutions must be a real number. So there'll be at least one real number among the three solutions. The other two can be anything at all. All right. So the three solutions here, if the, um, they may all be real numbers. I may get three different real numbers, something like 4, 1 and negative 2. Or I might get three plus root two, negative root two, or something like that. Three different real numbers as my answers. Alternatively, I might have a repeated root where all three numbers are real, but there's a repeated one. So I might have, for example, four, negative one, and negative one. The solution negative one is repeated twice in the solution set. Or I could have the, uh, a solution repeated three times. I might have an equation where the solutions are negative two, negative two, negative two. So the, the solutions here, at least one will have to be a real number. And if all three of them are real, they might all be different or they might, there might be a repeated one in there. Alternatively, I might have an equation where one of them is real and the other two are not. The other two are complex numbers. So, but whatever the case I'm dealing with here, there will always be three solutions. So the key thing for leaving cert to remember is that um, at least one of the solutions will be a whole number. That's a promise for leaving cert, that at least one integer solution. So, so there's a reason why that's important, that if I'm solving a quadratic equation, if I take an equation like x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0, the quickest way to solve this is to factorize the left-hand side. So if I factorize the left-hand side um, here, the factors of x squared are x by x, and the factors of negative 10, the constant at the end, will be negative 5 and plus 2. Right? And then remember the basic idea. If two things multiply together give you an answer of 0, one of those must equal 0. If you think about that for a second, in your own head now, multiply together two numbers that give you 0 as an answer you'll see that one of those numbers has to be zero. So you cannot multiply two things together, neither of which is zero, and get zero as an answer. So the only way multiplying this by this will give me zero is if either that equals zero, x minus five equals zero, or that equals zero, x plus two equals zero. And if I solve these equations here, um, add five to both sides, I get x equals five here, and subtract two from both sides, I get x equals negative 2. And there are my two solutions, this equation, because this equation is quadratic. The highest power of x is 2. It means I'm looking for two solutions, and here they are. Two distinct real numbers, four, 5 and negative 2. I take the same approach to trying to solve a cubic equation like this. Now, when I've got my cubic equation, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 equals 0, what I want to try to do is factorize the left-hand side and use the same trick. That if, if I've got two things multiplied together giving me zero as an answer, then one of those things must equal zero. I can just put each of those things equal to zero and solve. The problem is the left-hand side here doesn't factorize easily using any technique I have at my disposal. So there's no common factor there, like there isn't an x in every term where I could pull x outside a bracket as a common factor, so I can't use highest common factor. I can't use grouping because there aren't enough terms, so it's very, very hard to factorize this. So I have to try to kind of force this to factorize using a bit of a maneuver, using a bit of footwork here. And that's why it's important that for leaving cert, I'm guaranteed that at least one answer has to be an integer has to be a whole number. Because my plan to start this equation here, start this solution, is to find an answer, find a solution by trial and error. So start dropping numbers in here and here for x until I find one that gives me an answer of zero. Find a root by trial and error. Now that's not as random as it sounds because the whole number I'm looking for must be a factor of the constant, the number on the end here. So it has to be a number that divides evenly into four. So the only whole number factors of four are one, two, and four. 
And remember, the, answer, the, the roots could be negative as well. So there's only six contenders here, six numbers that, that I need to test. I could use positive or negative one, positive or negative two, positive or negative four. There's no point trying positive or negative three. They're not factors of this number here. Therefore, I know for sure they won't work. So I'm just going to test um, those, those numbers if I find one that works to get my foot in the door. Now, I could try them in one at a time. I could go ahead and try one, try negative one, try two, try negative two, one at a time till I find one that works. But the quickest way to do that is by using my calculator. So if I switch on my calculator, I want to use the table function here to test a number of different values in the original function. So to do that, I'll press the menu button in the top right hand corner. And you can see option number three here is for a table. So I'll just press the number three. And when I do, I bring up this function notation here, f of x equals. So all I want to do now is type in the left hand side of my equation here, exactly as it appears on the page in front of me. So the x I'm looking for is here. It's above the right hand bracket. So above and to the right of the number nine, you've got your right hand bracket. And above that in red is the letter X I'm looking for. And anywhere I put that red letter X in this formula, the calculator will throw in a value when I ask you to do so now in a moment. So you get the red letter X here. I want to press the alpha button. So press alpha and the, the, the right hand bracket. And there's my letter X. And then we'll cube that. And then minus three X squared. So minus three and then press alpha and the bracket again to get the x, and then we'll square that. There's the minus 3x squared, and then the plus 4. I don't want to put in the equal 0, the right-hand side of my equation. There's already an equals here, and I couldn't put in two equal signs. We'll deal with the equal 0 now in a moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give the calculator a list of x values, and it's going to throw those x values in here, where I've put the letter x, and tell me what answers come out. So I now press equals, and on the newer Casio, it will ask me, have I got a second formula? So if I want to throw a set of values into two separate formulas at the one time, maybe, for example, I'm trying to draw two separate graphs, I could put a second formula in here, but I don't in this case, so I just press equals again. And now the calculator asks me where I want to start and what I want the step to be. So the start is the first x value I want the calculator to throw the numbers in. So as we, into the formula. So as we established a moment ago, um, all the numbers I'm looking for lie between negative four and plus four. So I'm going to start at negative four. So I'll press the negative button over here on the left hand side, four. So I'm going to start at negative four, press equals. I'm going to end at plus four, positive four. So I'll just press four and hit equals. And the step is what do I want to go up in. So because I'm, I'm looking only for integers here, for whole numbers, I'm going to go up in ones. So my step is one and I'll press equals. So you can see what I've got now in this table here down the left hand side are all the numbers from negative four all the way down to plus four. And on the right in the right hand column, then you can see these are the answers that come out when those values are thrown into the formula put in a moment ago. So remember the, the equal zero part of my equation, I'm looking for the numbers that give me an answer of zero. And you can see there's one here straight away. You can see there's a zero there. So negative one. So negative one is an X value, which when it's thrown into that formula, X cubed minus X squared plus four gives me an answer of zero. So that's a root. That's one of the solutions to my equation. Now, if I just go down and check, are there any other integer solutions? So if I keep going down here, zero doesn't work. No, no. Oh, you can see the number two works as well. So two is also a solution here. So of the three solutions I'm looking for, I found two already. I know that negative one and two are both solutions to this equation. They're both roots because they both give an answer of zero when they're thrown into the left-hand side of my equation. Are there any more? No. So, the, so there's two integers there, negative one and two. So I know from using my calculator that x equal to negative one and x equal to two are solutions here. I have to find the third one. Now, because these are all the, the coefficients of all of the, uh, the terms in the equation, all three coefficients, the coefficient of x cubed, the coefficient of x squared, and the constant are all integers. If two of the answer integers that they are here, then the third one is an integer as well. So that would suggest that one of these two roots here is repeated. So the solutions are either negative one, negative one, and two, or negative one, two, and two. It looked like that. So because remember, because this um, this the, the x cubed term here is positive, it means that if I was to draw a graph of this cubic here, it's one that looks like that. 
it's one that, that changes direction twice and ends up increasing over here on the right hand side. So the options here are it'll either I would suggest look like this, where the x axis comes across here. So you can see it hits it bounces off the x axis at the number negative one. So negative one is a repeated route and then hits the x axis here again at two. So it'll be negative one, negative one and two are the three solutions because a repeated route is where the graph bounces off the x axis rather than cutting across it. Or alternatively, if I've got the same shape again, like this, it might look like it might look like this instead, where the x-axis comes across here. And you can see it hits the x-axis here at negative one and then bounces off the x-axis there at negative, uh, sorry, at, at two. All right, before going up this way. So the same shape again here. So this would be two, the repeated route. So the fact that we've got two integer solutions here, and because there's no number, if there was a number in front of the x cubed here, if there, then, for, for example, if there was a, a number in front of the x cubed there, it means the third root might be a fraction. It might, it might not, it might be a rational number. It might not be an integer. But, but this suggests that, that there's a repeated root here. It's a matter of finding which one. So in any case, all I need to do to, to use this, this particular method here is I just need to find any one solution by trial and error using my calculator to get this method to start it. So I'll forget about the equals two for a moment here. I could use the two if I wanted to. I'm just going to use this one solution here because that's all I need to get this method working. So when you're trying to solve a cubic equation and you're not able to factorize the left-hand side, your first step, step one here, is to find a solution, a, a route that works using trial and error. And once I've got that now, I can get my foot in the door. I can start the process of factorizing. Because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the factor theorem. And the factor theorem is essentially these two lines here in reverse order. That you can see here, if I know that x equal to negative 2 is a solution, if I add 2 to both sides to put this number over on the same side as the x, I get x plus 2 equals 0. And that means x plus 2, as you can see, is one of the factors. Because it's one of the things I put equal to 0 to give me this um, line on top. right? So when you've got x equals minus 1, imagining just reversing these two lines here, doing these two lines in reverse order. So if x equals negative 1, if I add 1 to both sides, I get x plus one equals zero. So essentially I move the minus one over on the same side as the X. So this here is one of my factors. So that's a factor. So what I've now found is I found one of the factors. Remember, the plan is to try to factorize the left-hand side like this. So I now know my cubic equation, which is X cubed minus three X squared plus four equals zero can be written this way that x plus 1 is one of the factors. And I just now have to find the other factor. And once I do, I can then just finish the question out the way I did here. Right? I've got these two things multiplied together to give me 0. So I can put that equal to 0, that equal to 0, and that will give me my solutions. So it's all about finding this here. And in order to do that, I'm going to just um, use long division. I'm going to divide the factor I know into this left-hand side here to find what the other factor is. So to do my long division then, I'll just say, look, um, the factor I've got is x plus 1. And I want to divide that into the left-hand side of my original equation, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. Now, I'm just going to leave a gap where the x's would normally go in this expression because this expression has no x's. But when I'm doing a long division of like this, I would always think of that the first column, if you like, coming down here, the first column under the division sign is the x cubes. The next column is the x squareds. The next column is the x's. And the next column is the constants. And if any of those terms are missing from the, the expression on the division symbol, I leave a gap where they should be because I will need all of those columns. And now I can just do my division. So I'll start off x cubed divided by x, take the first term inside the symbol and divide by the first term outside. So it's x cubed divided by x gives me x squared. So I'll just write that up here. And then once I put an answer above the line of that, I'll multiply everything over here by that and write my answers below. So x squared by x is x cubed. I'll put that here under the other x cubed. And then x squared by plus 1 is plus x squared. 
Now, I'll change the signs of those two terms now because I'm going to subtract them. So subtract just involves change signs. So this becomes negative, and so does this. They both become negative. And an x cubed and negative x cubed, they will cancel. And I get negative 3x squared, take away x squared. So I've now got negative 4x squared here. And then I've got to leave the gap and I'll bring down this plus four, which I haven't used yet. And now I just rinse and repeat. So I just repeat that basic sequence of steps until I get zero remainder. So I'll go again. So now the first term under the division symbol is this minus four X squared here. So as always, the first term under the division symbol gets divided by the first term outside. So negative four X squared divided by X is my negative four X. So you put that up there. And then negative four X by X gives you negative four X squared like that. And then negative four X by plus one gives you negative four X. That's why I left the, the gap here for the X's. I'm going to need that X column at some stage in the division anyway. So as always, when I put an answer above the line here, I multiply everything on the left-hand side by that and write my answers below in the corresponding columns. Now change the signs for subtraction. So this becomes a plus and so does this. And you can see now negative 4x squared and plus 4x squared, they cancel, all right? And I've just got this plus 4x here. So I've got 4x like that. And again, bring down the plus 4 I haven't used yet. And now finally, one, one more time with feeling. So again, the first term, only the division symbol here is 4x. Divide that by x, you get plus 4. Okay? And as usual, plus 4 by x gives me 4x. Plus 4 by plus 1 gives me plus four, and that's adorable because you can see, and these two here match. So when I change the signs for the, on the bottom for subtraction, that becomes negative, and so does this. Everything cancels and I get zero. So if I didn't get zero here, we'd have a problem because remember, I know for sure that this is a factor, which means it divides in with no remainder. So if I don't get zero down here, I've made an algebra mistake somewhere in my division here. So I need to go back and check that. The remainder cannot not be zero in this case. And there's your second factor there. So I know the other bracket here is x squared minus 4x plus 4. So you can see that this kind of long-winded method of finding a root that works, a number that works, a root, by trial and error, creating a factor and doing the long division in algebra is designed to let you factorize the left-hand side as we would normally do in a polynomial equation like this when a normal straightforward factorization method doesn't work. But now I've factorized the left-hand side. It took me a bit of time to get there, but because I couldn't factorize the left-hand side any other way, I've now got the job done. So now I know my rich equation looks like this. It's x plus one times x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that's equal to 0. So the same trick I used back when I was solving my quadratic equation, if these two things multiply together to give me 0, either this must be 0, and I already know what happens here, that if x plus 1 equals 0, that means x is negative 1. That's the root I knew already. But if I put this equal to 0 here, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0, that will give me the other two solutions. And you can see you know, that's a bog standard quadratic equation, not too hard to solve in this case. I can actually do this one by, by um, factorizing, factors of x squared are x by x, and the factors of plus four, that will give me a minus four in the middle are negative two and negative two. Like that, so you can see, and yeah, that gives me the, the, the quadratic there. So again, putting each of these brackets equal to zero, I get x uh, minus two equals zero, and the same over here, x minus 2 equals 0. So again, if I add 2 to both sides here, I get x equals 2. And add 2 to both sides here, I get x equals 2. So as I said earlier on, one of the roots would repeat. In this case, it's the 2 that's repeated. So your x values there, your solutions, the x values that make that equation true are negative 1, 2, and 2. They're the three solutions to the original cubic equation. So they're the basics of solving a cubic equation. As always, if you have any questions, send me a message.